gentlemen, George here, and we're back again with my implementation of this game thing, whatever. And uh, what we're doing now is continuing off from the last video. Uh, we had just finished how to lose the game when the animatronic gets to you. In this video, we're going to deal with winning the game. Uh, and right now, we have one way of winning the game, and that is by going to each of the waypoints that are available and getting through them. And the waypoints are controlled, or at least uh, assessed, through the waypoint manager. Uh, as you move through the waypoints, it checks to see that you have gone through them. It checks to see whether or not you're in an ordered mode or an unordered mode. And that, of course, determines whether or not you're going in the right sequence or not. And of course, as everything goes right, we go to this method right here, check if all waypoints found, and then we iterate through them all, see whether or not each one is found, and if so, we return true. Now at this point, we're going to want to inform the game that yes, we have won, um, and we should be moving on to the next round. So we're gonna go to the play manager, and right now we have game over as uh, one method. Why don't we go ahead and add a win clause to this? So private pool uh, has won. And let's go ahead and make our accessor methods again. Let's uh, click on this, right click, quick actions and refactoring. And let's go to has won. And I am, let's see, uh, we do need a setter. We do need a getter, that's fine. And inside of here, has one gets set equal to value. And then we're going to want to change our game over text. I'm going to use, we should really rename this from game over to something else. Uh, in our final implementation, we're going to create something more crafty, probably something with particle effects and so forth. But for right now, all we're going to do is replace the game over text with you've won instead. And uh, let's actually add that to our list of things to do. So coming over here, uh, create a, create, a better ending, better windscreen. That's probably gonna end up being its own class in and of itself, like I said, with multiple things going on. So really, maybe I should go ahead and uh, create something for that. So coming back over here, let's see, we've got our scripts and let's, um, let's see. Let's go to create C-sharp file and let's just call it win. Open that up really quick. And Win is going to, well, for right now, Win is going to be responsible for changing that game text that we have. So why don't we go ahead and grab a reference to that. So going over to Waypoint Manager, we, what do we have here? Excuse me, going over to Play Manager, this is where we're doing everything. We're going to have this private, uh, let's see, where is it? Text Mesh, this is what we want. And we don't want to call it Game Over Text anymore. It should just be Screen Text. So we're going to grab that, paste that in here, and just call that screen text. And we now need a method to call when we've won. So let's just do a public void win. And this will be responsible for everything that we're actually going to do inside of it. Uh, actually, I can't name that the same thing. So let's call this win or has won. So now we need to find our screen text dot text is going to be equal to some string. Let's go ahead and save that up here. So we can do a serialized field and actually I should do that for this too. So let's do serialized field for this and we'll do string and we'll call this a uh, win text. And let's just set that equal to something by default and that'll just be, um, You've survived. How about that for now? And we're going to set screen.text.text equal to win text at that point. And that should really be it that we need. Now the waypoint manager, excuse me, not the waypoint manager, the play manager is going to need access to this. I'm trying to think here. The play manager is potentially going to have different win scenarios that occur and different things that'll need to be shown on the screen. So should win inject itself into the play manager or should the play manager find an object of type win in the scene and work with that? Not exactly sure at the moment how I wanna do that. So for the moment, for right now, let us just go ahead and create this as a variable that we'll pass in. And uh, we'll work on that as we evolve things further. We'll just do serialized field win, uh, win. We'll grab win and we'll come down here and under has one, uh, has one is equal to value. Actually has one needs to be equal to true in this case. Well, no, it's gonna be equal to value. Really, 
I don't want to set her like this, do I? Game over. I guess, uh, I guess it's fine. So anyway, has one occurs, has one is equal to value. Um, if has, if has one, oh boy. Then we're going to go ahead and call win dot, if has one and win, so that win is not null, win dot has one. So that'll populate the screen properly. And uh, technically we probably might want to lose as well because there could be multiple loses or losses, ways of losing. So let's just kind of change a few things and call, instead of calling this game over text, let's once again call this screen text and just coming on down here, let's make a few changes. So screen text .game object set active is true, uh, but we're going to want this to change the text on that one as well. So game over text .game over set active is false. So that's turned off. We're also going to want to turn that on. So this line here needs to be in here as well. So it gets turned on. And then really now that I've differentiated these, I should now make a loss class as well. So let's go to file, save as, and of course I could go even further with this if I wanted to, but I'm not going to get crazy with anything. We're just going to call this, um, instead of play manager, I'm going to say loss. So there's win and loss script. And we'll call this, oh, hold on a second. We want to not do that. We're going to open. Uh, we'll just open it from here. It's easier. So let's find loss. There we are. And now we have loss. So let's just change this to loss. Everything else is fine. Actually, no. Whoops. That was a foolish thing. Why is play manager loss? Did I save the wrong file? I, it looks like I had the wrong thing selected. Okay. Close this. I just need to make, oh wow, I made a huge mistake. Let's open up Play Manager. Play Manager is still fine. Let's go over to Win. Let's save that really quick. File, save as, and save that one as loss now. Yes. Okay. Yes to all. Now let's open up loss. We should have everything working at this point. There's loss, perfect. And we'll choose that part and change it to loss. And then we'll call this uh, game over. And we just set the text down there, so that's fine as well. All right, so we shouldn't need to do anything else there. Uh, all we need to do is have, um, let's see, what do you give me crap for? Could not be found. Uh, what happened to win? Win should still exist. There's win. I'm guessing it didn't update. Let's just type in. Oh, come now. Type win. All right, I want to ignore the fact that it's not doing what I say because it's just, let's let's close this out, give it a second and open win up. Let's also open up play manager and now it's playing properly. So we're going to go ahead and grab win that one. And we'll do loss. And technically these are going to be the only objects that we have. So I'm wondering if I should just pick this thing up by finding by type. Let's go down to awake really quick and do a couple, uh, not awake, let's do it in start. We're gonna do a couple things to make, just make sure that I didn't screw anything up. I'm gonna grab these two lines and go to start, paste these in here, get rid of the serialized fields and the declarations, the types, move these on over and do some checking. So if when, if when, and loss, if not when, or not loss, either one. Then let's debug statement out. Debug.log um, references missing for win or loss, just for now, that's good enough. Okay, and that's fine. So screen text.game, we set that to be off, should be fine there. So let's add loss. So going over to managers, I'm going to put it under there, create empty and call this one win for now. Let's create another one, create empty. Let's just call this loss and add win and add loss. Go to play manager now and grab win, grab loss 
and then there's screen text. See, and here's the thing, I almost feel like I shouldn't have a reference to it here because win and loss both have references to it. So I think I'm gonna remove the reference here to screen text out of Play Manager and we're gonna stick it in the other one. So uh, here it is, public text mess screen text. We're gonna get rid of it there. And game over has one, that's fine. Um, Screen.txt, that's fine as well. I'm just gonna end up grabbing from win or lose whatever I need. Both of them are gonna actually reference the same thing, both win and loss. So let's come over here and create a getter for that. You won't have a setter for it. I'm gonna copy that same line and go over to win and bring that over here as well. Okay, so now I can get the screen text from this stuff. So now I can just call something like win.screenText and I don't need to do, yeah, that's, that's fine. So let's grab win, come down here, do the same thing, dot screen text, capital S. So that's has one, this is game over. So really I should be doing loss in this case. And coming on down here, either one is fine. We're gonna do win and that's fine as well. I know I'm setting this twice now externally, which is kind of annoying me, but uh, we'll come up with something better, I'm sure, later on. Okay, so let's go to win and loss now, grab our game over text, put that there, and our game over text there as well. So we've got our text and we've got references to everything. We're gonna hit save really quick. Let's go ahead and let's see. Um, I'm gonna to need to move the player from node to node. So we'll grab that, just pick them up a little bit, move them around, bink, bink. So we have nothing over here being displayed at the moment. Let's keep going, bink. And I don't know what order, if it's ordered or not, I don't think so, and bink. So I did hit them all and nothing happened. And that's probably because I'm a moron and I did not actually do that. So inside of Waypoint Manager is where I need this to happen. So scrolling on down, we need to go to check if all waypoints found. In that case, we are going to grab a reference to the Play Manager. So we'll do Play Manager dot instance dot has one. Let's see, actually. See, I'm almost wondering if I just want to call, make this a method has one instead of an, a getter and a setter. You just call it and you win. You know, for right now, we'll we'll leave it the way it is. Uh, if for some reason we can end up creating it that way in the future, we'll do that. This happens through the property and we come down in here uh, in Play Manager. This is all going to happen down here. So everything should work perfectly. Now our current Waypoint Manager, how is that operating? Is it unordered or ordered? So let's go to the Play Manager, uh, not that, we want the waypoints. So here's the waypoints and currently it's unordered so I can go in any sequence I choose. We're gonna grab that body again, just move it up a little bit and move, 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 move and ding. And there we go, you've survived, pops up on the screen. So great, okay, that was pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, in the next video, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna work on. We might jump into, I've been, I've been thinking about adding the ability for doors to be locked. If you have them within a very close angle to where they're supposed to be shut, uh, the player would be able to somehow lock the door. Not exactly sure really what I'm doing in that case, um, if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but uh, if, I'll, if you'd lock a door, I was thinking the animatronic comes to that door, the animatronic will get the chance to bust the door down, thereby making it so that you can no longer shut that door in the future. And that could be kind of interesting as a strategy to slow down the animatronic, but at the same time, you could risk losing the door. Just, it's just something I was thinking about. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. So long everyone and goodbye. Mm -hmm.